back, folks. First comment comes from Jeannie Hayes, and they say, if colon space Russell hyphen J colon space Gould doesn't claim his gifted hour workshop, then I'm with the claim of the forfeited workshop by for the Russell hyphen J colon space Gould. Just saying. And ladies and gentlemen, because that is in brackets, it's certainly not correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. And Jeannie Hayes is indeed a beginner, has admitted in the past they don't know the first thing about correct sentence structure. So they get a pass on that. I'm not going to really critique what they're saying other than with correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, one would only make a claim for oneself. And so they're saying that they're claiming a forfeited workshop. Forfeited, of course, past tense. You would never use that in correct sentence structure. But the general idea gist of it is, is that Jeannie Hayes is claiming a forfeited workshop. Not Russell, Jeannie. And if you go to the end of it, it says, by, the Russell, J uh, by Russell J. Gould. Now they're putting Russell as the authority and making a claim for him. So. It's a double. <clears throat> One would only make a claim for oneself. Jeannie did not get a forfeited workshop, or Jeannie did not forfeit a workshop, so why would they claim to forfeit a workshop? Jeannie is not Russell J. Gould, so they wouldn't make a claim for Russell. See what I'm saying? Now, in theoretically, in the structure of correct sentence structure, you could say that you're claiming to witness Russell J. Gould forfeiting a workshop. You could articulate it that way. You could articulate that it's your perception that Russell forfeit was with the forfeiture of a workshop. You know, there's different ways you can do it. But the way they put it there is not one of them. And so, uh, anyways, hope that helps. Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from C.D. Mesker, and they say, For this claimant's true knowledge of the Russell is with the clone of the fiction person with the CIA handler and Rachel and fraudulent conveyance of the grammar with this site of the Cynthia. So this is an attempt at correct sentence structure. But again, as in with uh, their last attempt at it, the end of it is not correct. It does not end on an authority. It ends on a concern, therefore, that negates the whole thing and negates the mathematical interface. This is not correct sentence structure, firstly. Second of all, the claimant is saying that uh, they have true knowledge that Russell is a clone, is a fiction person, and that Rachel is his CIA handler. Now, they're saying that's true knowledge. Now, to say that means that they have proof of this. They have concrete proof. They have evidence, a continuance of the evidence that this is true. Because truth is truth. And fiction is fiction. Where's the evidence? Can you present that? Otherwise, this is just an opinion. Because it's not correct sentence structure, one would not say this unless... They had concrete evidence, and they can prove it to another individual. All right. Outside of that, grammatically, who's the claimant? There is no claimant here. We see claimant's true knowledge, but we don't see who the claimant is. Are we to assume the claimant is Cynthia? But then again, they don't take authority over the words because they end with a concern. So there is no claimant credentialed. There is no proof. And how does one become a fiction person after all? Like, what is a fiction person? That's interesting. And also, okay, another technical uh, issue, CIA. I said CIA when I read it, but really, what is it? If I'm to say it as I see it, it's CIA? Or hard C, Kia? I don't know. Because it's certainly not a correct abbreviation. Because if it was a correct sentence structure abbreviation, it would be C period hyphen I period hyphen 
A, period, would be how it would be written. But then again, why would you say that? Because intelligence and agency are both no contract. There are ways to articulate that, but this is not one of them. So this is not a correct sentence structure. And uh, what I can say to C.D. Mesker is keep studying. Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from Tiz What Tit Tiz. <laughs> okay. And they say, hi, Jason. I was wondering if you could let me know what you know regarding correct sentence structure and what books I need in order to learn it. Also, the proper terminology, please, kind regards. Oh, wow. They, they don't want much, do they? <laughs> They're not asking for much, are they? <laughs> Wow. Let me get right on that. All right. So they were wondering if I could let them know what I know regarding correct sentence structure. As I said in uh, my response to this, my kuleana to this, there are 900 videos on this channel, tis what tit is. If you would take the time, invest the energy in actually looking into what you're asking about, rather than right at the jump asking to be spoon-fed, you'd get a better idea of how this stuff works. But I do get one of these folks every so often. You know, I don't really fault them for it. I mean, it's just this new generation appear to have a sense of entitlement. They don't want to do any work. They just come on and see a video and then without any research, without looking into the author of the video, the creator of the video, without looking at the creator's channel to see what playlists there are or what information is available for free on YouTube, they would rather just type out a little comment and expect to get handed all the things that they themselves could find out pretty easily for themselves in five or ten minutes. Of browsing but even that's asking a little too much of these days generation I'm not giving this individual a hard time I'm giving my perception of what I see as a YouTube content creator and as a quantum grammar tutor a correct sentence structure communication parsley syntax grammar tutor over the last six years definitely the younger newer viewers or those new to the internet definitely exhibit this type of quote-unquote entitled behavior where they just want stuff handed to them or they just want to be spoon-fed. All right. So that is uh, my suggestion for you. And the second comment from them, they say, that clears up any confusion on trying to understand the origin of names because you are bang on the money when you shared the contract clause and the fact that as a child you could not enter any agreement and those who did so on your behalf are mistaking you for the fiction. Well, that's an assumption. That last part right there is an assumption. Those who did so, who i.e. entered into the birth certificate agreement, are mistaking you for the fiction. No, that's not what they're doing. They're, with my perception, are participating with the birth certificate system because that's all they know. That's what they've been taught. They don't know anything else about it. They don't know how it works. They just know that that's what their child needs in order to participate with society and get jobs and things like that. I mean, and go places and get licenses and whatever else people need to do to be able to move about fr freely in society. They're not mistaking you for fiction because, again, that, that goes back to the 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 in the last comment or one of the last comments where they said fiction hyphen person like what is that what concept is that really i mean because when a baby's born that's not a fiction baby a baby's a baby right it's what's on paper that's the issue thanks for the comment sailors extreme something and they say I feel bad for you, man. I hope you are doing better. That, that saying, a picture is worth a thousand words, never applied, never better applied to a picture than this one right here. Bro. 
I, I know I gave Kuliana to this in the comments, field, but now that I see the picture up close, like I was looking at it on my phone, I couldn't see the profile picture, but now that I'm looking at it on my laptop, I feel bad for, for that person. I hope they're doing better. Whew. Next comment comes from Radicat Paraboo. And they say, pull up Queens, New York. And then I say, why? And then they say, I, or they say, am Mrs. Golden Gould. And then I say, forget learning quantum grammar. You'd be better off learning to speak and write plain English first before attempting anything so fancy. Also, taking caps lock off is a great place to start. <laughs> I have a feeling I know who this person is. It's a nom de guerre account made by someone. I think that I previously blocked and I think they've because that last word paraboo rings a bell in my memory of someone else that I'm familiar with that I ended up blocking because of troll behavior and as you can see if this is who that is indeed then they're continuing that type of behavior uh, with no respite respite that's the word re means no with no spite Actually, I don't know if they're spiteful or not. I just know they're using caps lock and talking in a style of language that leads me to believe that perhaps even perhaps getting mental help would be a good idea. Just a thought. Next comment comes from Donnell Jackson, and they say, I hope everyone realized the significance of this. Jason has been keeping it real since day one of his vids. Well, Donnell, cheers. I appreciate that. And they are, of course, referring to the series of videos I did last week when I was in Arizona and I was offering Colin Russell Hype and Jay Colin Gould a free, the gift of a free one hour workshop in which I would personally, in person, drive out to his location in Arizona and give him the hour workshop, the 60 minutes. And of course, he never contacted me to take me up on that offer. Uh, but I put it out there. It's important to me that I put it out there in the, the cosmos, in the ether. It was important that I put that offer out there so that I did make a genuine effort to extend not not so much an olive branch but give Russell a chance to perform on his claims of humility and openness to learn another one from Jeannie Hayes or a couple from Jeannie Hayes and they say I don't even know what positional sequencing means? Well, maybe you might want to find out before trying to use it. I mean, I mean, of course, you can do whatever you want to. But uh, it's like anything. If you have a tool or something, are you going to start using it before you know how to use it? Or are you going to learn how to use it first? What's logical to you? And then they say, for the Jason, for the bracket of the starbird is with the babble speak by the bracket of the starbird. Oh, my goodness. I have no idea what they mean by starbird bracket. Starbird. Do they mean starboard? <laughs> I don't know what they mean, starbird. I'm not yet at your level of the grammar. Baby steps, my friend, be nice to me. Uh-oh. We may have a sensitive type on our hands here. Folks, nice has nothing to do with it. Kindness has everything to do with it. Balance of honor and grace has everything to do with it. If I'm telling you, if you want to learn the grammar and you want to get serious about it, contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and I offer that to you and you don't take me up with that offer, and I've offered it to you several times, and you continue to try to use your version of whatever quantum gobbledygook you're using, and then I critique it, 
and then you come back and say, be nice to me, that doesn't, that negates it because I've already offered you a venue for closure and you have not accepted it. So keep that in mind. This is a grammar channel and I'm going to critique your grammar, whether it's correct sentence structure or plain simple English. That's just the nature of this channel. Memory minder. Remember, re, no. So I say memory. Reminder, re means no, thus memory minder. Remember, reminder. I have never heard that term used in my entire 50 some years on this planet in plain simple English. I've never heard someone say, remember, reminder. I've never heard people use those two words in that combination. So this is all new to me, Jeannie Hayes. I don't know what type of people you hang around with that use that type of plain simple English, but I've never been around folks like that. Yes, I'm new and void of the knowledge. As I learn more, I'm humbled because it's all babble fiction BS. And how do you express X, no press, this, no press, WTF? The thought, because it's all babble BS, I don't even know how to speak anymore. Hmm. I think you have an argument there. I'm just being goofy. <laughs> WTF, not being mean, but I teach meditation. How would that be mean? How would I construe you teaching meditation as being mean? Interesting. Structured thinking in the creative process. I've not taught since I've learned of the grammar. OMG, help the girl laugh, laugh, laugh. And how do you speak simple English when you've come to the knowledge that simple English is babble fiction BS? For the bracket of the port is with the end, babble speak by the bracket of the port. Okay, so when they said starboard, I think they mean starboard side. All right, they just don't know how to spell the terminology, I guess. So here's the thing. I can simplify it for you, Jeannie Hayes, if you choose to listen. You're using plain, simple English. You can communicate with folks all day long, right, using plain, simple English. When you're teaching meditation, you use plain, simple English to teach folks. Try and be as clear and concise about your instructions as you possibly can as a teacher. That's what I do. You don't want to use complicated terminology that your audience is not familiar with. You want to use common terms that everybody knows pretty much. You can guess they know what each term means. So you use the clearest, most concise way of communication in plain, simple English. So you do know how to speak. We've all been taught this from day one. If we went to school and paid attention and we spoke with other folks, we learned how to talk and communicate. I'll use the word communicate. It's a better word. In plain, simple English, whether you're writing or speaking. Now we know there is a difference between speaking and writing plain, simple English. There is. Most folks find it easier to communicate verbally than they do writing stuff down. You can find great disparities in knowledge level between writing plain, simple English and speaking plain, simple English in a lot of places. And usually it's those folks that don't have high school diplomas or whatever that cannot write the plain, simple English, but they can speak it pretty well good enough to communicate. Because I mean, who cares at the end of the day, if you can get your point across and I understand you, we can contract, whether it's written or spoken. Now a correct sentence structure, it's different. You cannot verbally, okay, no, let me strike that from the record. Speaking correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar verbally is very, very, very difficult. I'm not gonna say it cannot be done, with correctness. However, what I will say is, I don't know anybody that can do it. I myself, I can speak it off the top of my head, I can come up with it, but how do you account for the hyphens, the colons, the punctuations? Do you speak those verbally? You know, it's a, there's so many factors that go into it. That is why correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar is a written language, written. And that's all I'll say about that. But it's very precise, laser-like precision, 
And again, Jeannie Haynes, for the umpteenth time, you keep coming to this channel. I appreciate your participation with the, with the comments field. If you're serious, contact me and sign up for the workshops or at least apply for the workshops. But if this is just something you're just sort of dabbling in, hey, keep coming back. Maybe someday uh, that bug will bite you and you'll want to learn it. Next comment comes from Quantum something or other, and they say, for the backward certification of the Jason Matthews statement, for the closure of this stop and correct correspondence. Okay, we got a particle negation in the word correspondence. RE is a particle of negation. If you look it up in the etymology dictionary, you will see this. So that is a no contract word. That's one zero in the multiplication problem with zeros out the rest of it. Is with the Jason Matthews wrong authorization performance by the family name position. For the family name position of the Jason Matthews wrong authorization performance is with this stop and correct no contract by the closure. I think what they're trying to say they're trying to say that I have a wrong authorization performance by the family name position. But what name are they talking about? Are they assuming what a family name is? I think they are. I have never mentioned that there is a family name in my correct name. So they are making a complete assumption presumption here. And they themselves are creating a presumptuous scenario and quite frankly kind of arrogant scenario that they are stopping and correcting. They're correcting on my behalf, I guess. I didn't give them permission to do that. So let's see what they say here. For the clarification of the history, why would they put this in brackets? Is with the matter of the Title IV flag with this video of the published date with the share of this neutral party with the, I have no idea who this individual is and I have no idea what they're saying here. Let's read it backwards. For the glass of the Jason Matthew is with this neutral party. Are they saying I'm a neutral party? They're making another claim for me? I'm the authority of what they're saying so they're obviously making a claim for me. So that is definitely not correct. Not correct psychology. I also see some discrepancies in spacing here, but we can, we can overlook that. We can look past that. So let's see. The second sentence is, for the backward certification of the Jason Matthew statement, for the glass of the Jason Matthew is with this neutral party of the share with the published date. What are they talking about? I have to look this up. Hold on. Because I'm actually looking at this sentence and I'm wondering if they are copying and pasting one of my sentences into this. No, that is not the case. They didn't take any of my sentences. So that's what puzzles me as to why they would write this in this manner. It makes absolutely no sense. They have not taken jurisdiction over this, whoever they are. Uh, and although, I mean, with the way that their sentence is structured, they're very advanced with correct sentence structure they still have not reached a point where they can correctly convey what they're saying clear as a bell, all right? And when they go in brackets, they don't bother to use plain, simple English to translate. They just write quantum gobbledygook <laughs> in brackets, which is maybe why they put the brackets there because they know that their correct sentence structure is not 100%. 
So whoever this individual is, um, I can see that they've taken some of my techniques and are using them, such as putting the full colon in front of the numbers, in front of the tilde and in the number. I see that, uh, which is good, um, that they've taken that and they've started using that. So I know that they don't come from the Russell J. Gould school. So this actually might be someone who studied my channel or even did a workshop with me. However, yeah, they're just, they're just not quite there. So I guess um, whoever this individual is, and um, the only way I can say it is to be as straightforward as I possibly can with this. So I'm going to say this message directly to this quantum, whoever this person is. If you ever grow a pair of balls, you can contact me, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com, and confront me directly if you have a question or a concern about the correct sentence structure that I use. Because I don't really know what you're saying here. It appears to me you think there's something wrong with the way that I'm writing my name. However, I never use the word family name. I have never once in any video, you can look through all 900 videos-ish, I never refer to any part of my name as family name. So that's an assumption on your part. I don't know anything about writing how someone would write a family name. I know how they do it in the fiction, but not in the fact. And from looking at what you have here, what you presented to me, it looks as though you still may be firmly ensconced in the fiction with an advanced level of quantum grammar knowledge. That's my assessment as a six plus year tutor. Again, if you want to step up onto the geometric level playing field of contract communication, credential yourself, share your full correct name, come out into the light, take accountability for yourself, or continue to hide in the shadows and uh, write quantum, advanced quantum gobbledygook like this. Thank you very much for the entertainment. I do appreciate it. Keep coming back. Another comment from Jeannie Hayes. Oh, and this relates back to the other one about the memory minder, where they say memory minder that AL services, and by AL they mean ALL, all services are with the compensation. Get half up front with the balance collected on the spot. For the work of the man is with the wage worth by the work of the man. Just saying, if all must pay for the pay the fee for freight, so much Russell void of the free ride. That is incorrect. In my construct, there is a such thing called a donation and a gift. Those two things are given with no expectation of a return. Meaning, if I give a gift to you, I don't expect you to give back an equal gift to me. I don't expect that. A donation or a gift is something freely given with no expectation of a return. I don't know how many times I have to say that. Now, under the auspices of rule one, rule equal, if someone gives me a gift, of course, I'm going to look at a way from my own volition to return, to, to give a gift to them, to equal it out, right? But not everybody's like that, and, it, and it's okay. It's okay. If something is credentialed as a gift, it's a gift. If I say it's a gift, I don't expect anything back. Jeannie Hayes does not have any position to tell me how to do business. Now, in Jeannie Hayes' world, I mean, that may be how things work. Nothing is free. Uh, even if they say this is a gift, like if they give someone a gift for their birthday, they expect something back. You better give me, I gave you a pair of shoes as a birthday gift. You better give me back freaking 120 bucks. Those are some high class Nikes, bro. Even though it's a birthday present, happy birthday, where's my, where's my 120 bucks, bro? If, if that's how they navigate, that's up to them. <laughs> but with correct sentence structure in the domain of fact, it's a little bit different than the domain of fiction, which they will find out if they do decide to someday get serious about learning the grammar and take workshops and blah, 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 blah. Another one 
from the same person, and they said, I've always sucked at English. Verb, adverb, verb, pronoun, it's all a cluster F in my mind, and that is a challenge for me to comprehend. All right, I have to point out to this individual who has obviously not read the terms and conditions, and I always say this, and I'm sure you folks, regular viewers, are very tired of me saying this. Jeannie Hayes, please read the terms and conditions or the community guidelines for the comments field. Like in the other comment, you use the word bullshit multiple times. I ask in the terms and conditions, please don't cuss. It's that simple. Please don't use profanity. Um, I don't know how much more blunt I can be. One, I can let go, one or two, you know, in certain spots. Uh, but someone that continues to do it, I have to point this out to them. They obviously have not read the terms and conditions or community guidelines. So, Jeannie Hayes, when you walk into someone's house, do you take your shoes off? Um, do you go in a corner and take a poop in the corner? I mean, do you observe the rules of the house of which you are in? It's the same thing here. There are guidelines, and it's up to you to make yourself aware of those guidelines before opening your mouth. Now, again, I, I understand that folks just don't do that. They just don't think to do that. They just think they can presume to speak however they want to speak because it's the Internet. But this is a different place. And I like to cultivate a different type of atmosphere here. One a little bit more serious, a little bit more formal, with a little bit more etiquette. That's all. Thank you. Dharma Science Radio, i.e., colon Ian hyphen Dane colon space Lindblom says, maybe I missed it. However, I heard nothing about capturing the flag from this video, which I like a lot to see. And then I said, yep, you sure missed it. He says it very clear about the 14 second mark. So yeah, if you play that video, he literally says he captured the flag at about the 14 second mark. So... You sure did miss it, Ian. Thanks for the membership, by the way. Appreciate that. Next comment comes from Neil Fawcett. And they say, utter gibberish. This guy is working on the principle that if you look and sound serious and say stuff that no one can understand, it will come across as profound. Well, that's an assumption on your part, Neil Fawcett. Um, I don't work on that principle. And actually, this comment says more about you, Neil, than it says about me. I appreciate the compliment that you think that I look and sound serious. And the fact that you're saying I'm saying stuff that no one can understand. I mean, you're not going to really speak for everyone, are you? How can you speak for no one? Uh, but you can certainly speak for yourself. And if I'm saying stuff that you don't understand, then I guess you do not possess the neurological pathways to do so. And I mean, it's a tough break, but, you know, knowledge is finite. Learning is finite. Intellect is finite. And maybe you got the short end of the stick. I'm sorry to hear that. But thanks for the comment. Final comment from prolific commenter, Jeannie Hayes, and they say, what's the difference between CSS, CPS, and quantum grammar? And although I did give Kuliana back to this, I will verbally give further Kuliana to this question. Quantum grammar is a synonym for correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar. The former, quantum grammar, describes what correct sentence structure is. The latter, CSSCPS, literally tells you what it is. So you have correct sentence structure, which is or correct sentence structure communication, which is the first part of the grammar. Parse, which is the second part of the grammar. Syntax is the third part of the grammar. And actually, they left off the G at the end there because grammar comes at the end because grammar takes the authority over it. So correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar tells you literally what the technology is and gives you the three elements. Quantum grammar is just a synonym for it in plain, simple English, 
which if you give closure to that with correct sentence structure, if you look it up in an etymology dictionary and find out what quantum means and what grammar means, you can sum it up by saying quantum grammar, i.e. correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax grammar is a grammar of closure. Thank you.